a new episode of MT5. It's Catch the Snitch again and today I'll explain all the actions and reactions player can take when trying to score goals. This is Marcel and as you can see here I put this lovely uh, game mat with a mouse pad material on the table because after giving you an overview of the core mechanics in uh, the first video I want to explain all the actions and reactions that the player can do in detail in this video. So I just put some models down in the pitch and uh, I'm gonna explain you everything except for the Seekers actions which will be in an additional Snitch Race video. So first, the core rules. All the actions a player can take are on the card of the player and they depend on the position. For example, a chaser can do a pass, shoot, steal and maneuver action or reaction. A beater can do a beat or defense action or reaction. And a keeper can do a catch maneuver action as well as pass, shoot and steal. I explained in the gameplay elements video that when which coach will take actions with his players is determined by the tactical card they played and the action blocks on the top. So when you want to do an action, the you simply look at the card and there is the little dice icon show you which color of dice you use and the base rule is if you do an action you look for the quaffles which are called successes and you have to roll as le at least one success for the action to be successful reactions are always free and you can simply do them when the opponent does the corresponding action. When you do a reaction, you look for the opportunities, which are symbolized by the sticks on the dice, and you simply subtract all the opportunities you rolled from the successes your opponent rolled, and your opponent still needs one success left after this for the action to be successful. Now we are gonna start with the actions in detail and there are two additional actions to the actions I showed on the player cards because each player can do these actions. The first one is move, which I will explain now, and the second one is recover, which I will explain later. A move is simply taking a player and move it to an adjacent zone. This can be a player with a quaffle or without the quaffle. For example, my Ravenclaw player with a quaffle could do the move action and move forward. This brings us to another important rule when moving or doing other actions, and this is disadvantage. If you are at a disadvantage, which means that there are more players from your opponent's team in the same zone than from your team, then you can't move out of it. Additionally, all roads your players take in the zone will subtract one success or one opportunity, depending whether you do an action or reaction. If there are two more players, you are at a severe disadvantage, which means still no moving, but an additional minus one, so in sum minus two to all your roads, opportunities for reactions or successes for actions, making it really hard to do anything if you are at a severe disadvantage. There is, however, a special version of the move action, which is called shift and Specific gameplay events or intrepid move or other cards will give you the opportunity to perform a shift. It is not an 
an action a player can normally take. Shift is exactly like a move action, but you ignore the disadvantage. So with a shift, the Ravenclaw chaser could still move out of the zone. The next action a chaser can take is the pass, which can only be performed by the chaser which owns the quaffle. And you choose another chaser up to two zones away and try to pass him the quaffle. As with all actions, you take a roll, but there is no reaction. So if you roll at least one success, the pass is successful. If the pass is not successful, your rival chooses a zone, which is either the of the target player or an adjacent zone to that, and the quaffle goes loose there. For example here, but never in the scoring area. For a pass, you are at a disadvantage if either the target player or the passing player is at a disadvantage. A chaser of the defending team can do a steal action if it is in the same zone as a chaser with the quaffle of the other team and they do a normal roll, but as a reaction, the chaser with a quaffle can roll with their own steel value. If the steel is successful nonetheless, the quaffle goes into possession of the chaser who performed the steal. The most important action a chaser can take can only be taken if he got possession of the quaffle and is in the scoring area and it's the shoot action. If the opponent's keeper is in the scoring area, which will mostly be the case, and there is an additional little mini game, as you would expect from a, a night models or night games game, and you need those and goal hop cards. Each player has a set and first the chaser chooses in secret which ring they want to aim for and after this the uh, keeper's coach chooses which ring they want to defend especially. Both cards are revealed and if they not fit if they are different, then this is of course better for the chaser because he will aim at a ring which the uh, keeper is not intending to defend and therefore they get a additional success for their role. The keeper nonetheless can do a catch reaction no matter whether he uh, did the right or wrong ring. And as usual, if after subtracting the opportunities from the successes, there is at least one success, you score a goal. No matter whether the shoot is successful or not, the keeper will get the quaffle. And because the chaser no, long, no longer has the quaffle, he is not allowed in the scoring area, so he will choose one of the adjacent zones and shift towards them. And after that, a keeper's kickoff will happen. And of course, you get 10 points for scoring the goal and you get one of the snitch cards helping you to get the snitch. How snitch cards and uh, seeker actions work will be explained in a additional video, which will maybe be linked now. Now we get to the beater's action, which is beat. A beater can do a beat action if there is a bludger in the same zone and then he can target a opponent's player up to two zones away. For example, in this situation I could either target the keeper, the chaser with the quaffle or the opponent's beater. 
As normally you take the dice indicated on the beat action of the player and you roll. If the beat is successful, your opponent gets a stun token in all cases. Stun tokens are placed on the player cards and for each stun token a player has, he subtracts a one from every roll they take. So if you have two stun tokens, you would need three successes, for example, to successfully do a pass. And if the opponent got the quaffle, he will lose the quaffle in the zone that he's in or an adjacent zone. Very important to mention by the current FAQ, if you successfully hit the player with the quaffle, your action block immediately ends, even if there were another action you could do. So if you want to hit the player with a quaffle, make uh, sure you do it as your last action in the action block. For this action, there are actually two reactions. You can either do a maneuver with the target player, if it's a chaser or the keeper, or if the target is a beater or a beater is in the same zone, he can do a defense reaction. All of those reactions work as explained. You simply roll the dice, look for opportunities, the sticks, and subtract them from the result of your opponent's action. For example, if I try to hit the chaser with a quaffle, Instead of doing a maneuver reaction with the chaser, I could do a defense reaction with the beater. If I fail with the reaction, so the original beat action is still successful, it's still the chaser which is hit. No matter whether you hit or not, your opponent will always put the blood trail which is flying on in an adjacent zone. So in th this case, the Ravenclaw player could move the blood trail there after the action. Stun token brings us to the other action, which I mentioned at the start of the video which is recover and can be performed by all players. Recover simply removes one of the stun token on a player. And those were all the actions. To summarize, there is move, which allows a player to move to an adjacent zone and all players can perform this. There is recover, which also all players can perform and it removes a stun token. There are the chaser actions, which are pass the quaffle, which has no reaction for the opponent. There is steal, which steals the quaffle from a player in the same zone, and the opponent can react with their own steal value. And there is shoot in the scoring area, and the opponent's keeper can try to catch as a reaction. For the beaters, there is only the beat action, which can be dealt with the maneuver reaction or a defense reaction of another beater. And the keeper only got the actions of the chases and his reactions. An important rule when talking about actions is tempo points, which I will shortly explain here. If you do an action successfully, which included a roll, so it's a pass, a steal, a shoot or a beat, you gain one tempo point. If you have four of those tempo points, you immediately cash them in to get a snitch card. And if you get a tempo point, you can cash it in immediately by breaking the tempo, which allows you to do a free shift or pass action. Performing a pass action by breaking the tempo doesn't gain another tempo, so you can chain pass 
So that were all the actions plus a few uh, important rules like disadvantage and break the tempo. I hope you liked the video and got everything. If you don't, please feel free to comment on this video and I will try to explain it. Next time there will be the snitch race explained. And for so long I hope you enjoy my videos and you enjoy the game.